Here's the situation. Suppose that we have something in the rocks today that show that indeed there's a short half-life type radioactivity that was embedded in the granite. If indeed you don't have anything there to really indicate that, then the rock is going to cool over millions of years to get a solid rock. However, if there's something in the granite itself that would indicate a short half-life radioactivity was embedded in the granite, then you're going to have basically instant creation. We do have that. I've looked at rocks all over the world, granite rocks all over the world, and what do they have? They have these little circular rings here. This one is produced by the decay of polonium-218. It goes polonium-218, polonium-214, then down to polonium-210. All three alpha decays, the alpha particles go out and discolor the region right around the central speck. So what is interesting here is that the half-life of polonium-218 is only three minutes. You've got this embedded in rocks all over the world. Here's a schematic of basically what it looked like and why it's three minutes. I'm coming up with a viewpoint then that indeed the God of heaven is actually left in the foundational rocks. Indeed, proof that indeed you've got an instant creation of the granite rocks. Nucleogenesis, polonium hill is in the foundation. Granites limit the period, the time period from the actual origin and creation of the granites to the foundation rocks being solid. That was only three minutes. Now, we all know, of course, that Steven Weinberg says it's three minutes is after several billion years, of course, of the Big Bang. Didn't happen that way. Here we have G. Brent Dalrymple receiving a National Medal of Science from President Bush on 3.1405. Why do I mention him? Because in 1981 there was a trial, a famous trial in Little Rock, Arkansas, concerning the law that had been passed by the state of Arkansas requiring the teaching of creation science in the public schools. Here is Dalrymple's testimony. In Gentry's work, he proposed a very tiny mystery balanced on the other side by an enormous amount of evidence. It's important to know what the answer to that little mystery is. Here's what he just says on the witness stand there at the trial. If you have a granitic body, a rock that comes from a melt that contains this mica, mica is this mineral in which the halos are found, it cools down. It takes millions of years for a body like this to cool. That means that's supposedly the origin of the rock there, the old Capitan. So that by the time the body cooled, all the polonium would have decayed since it has an extremely short half-life. There would be no polonium in the body to cause the polonium halos. So what Gentry is saying is this is primordial polonium, therefore the granite mass in which it occurs could not have cooled slowly and have to have been created by fiat. He said on, on the witness stand. So, what are we going to do after that? The judge actually ruled against the creation law. Why did he do that? Basically because he wanted to show that indeed uh, the actual presence of the radioactive halos in granite rock were not an indication of rapid creation. Very quickly now, the judge, in making a decision about whether this Arkansas law of teaching creation science was valid or not, he says, this is the decision now, he said the 19 Arkansas creation law defined creation science, science that involved, among other things, sudden creation of the universe from nothing. However, when Judge Overton gets to the point of actually rendering his decision, referring to my work, which is the work showing that indeed there was instant creation, Overton says it's been dated. It's been dated. Now, 10 years prior to that time, I was, what, publishing in Science and Nature over and over and over again the evidence for these primordial radioactive halos. So I wondered how in the world could it be that Judge Overton would say my work was dated when it was all right there before him for the last 10 years, and on the witness stand, Brent Darrymple says it's a very tiny mystery, and I'll show a little bit more about this in just a minute. But what happened? How could he possibly say this work was dated and there arrive at a conclusion that the <coughs> Arkansas law was not valid? Well, I got a letter in the mail several years now after the trial.
That means that Dave Schramm and other cosmologists got to the judge. There was collusion between the ACLU expert witnesses and the Judge Overton. One of the greatest cover-ups in the history of science. If I had known that at the time, I would have gone back to the Attorney General of the State of Arkansas, and guess what? They would have filed suit. Fraud, fraud, fraud at the Arkansas Creation Trial. In other words, the only way that this material, I'm telling you this afternoon, has escaped notice, public notice, is because of the deception that was practiced there at the Arkansas trial by the ACLU. All right, so here's what happened. Remember, at the trial, Brent Dalrymple said, you know, this business of gentry, da, 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 da. He's got primordial halos. It looks like it's fiat creation, but I don't know for sure. In other words, he didn't convince the judge. Well, the judge was not going to be convinced because, in essence, he was with the ACLU in the trial from the very start of the trial itself. Anyway, this National Center of Science Education letter I have before you here is something that Brent Dalrymple wrote and distributed to every member of the American Geophysical Union, 30,000 or more members, in 19, this says 1995, he wrote a similar letter in 1992. What is, what am I bringing this out? Why am I bringing this out? It's because in this letter that Brent Dalrymple wrote, as a fundraising letter, it says the following. The creation science movement is beginning to affect college classes. The members of Genesis Club enter classrooms with disruptive and difficult to answer questions. How would you answer a student who claims the presence of polonium? This is now Brent Dalrymple saying in this letter that went out to 30,000 geophysicists who claims that the presence of polonium helios in granite demonstrate the granite had to have formed suddenly, specially created. He wrote a letter like this in 1992. He was appealing to 30,000 other geoscientists, cosmologists, help me understand what's going on. These guys in the Genesis clubs are going all over America saying that indeed there's evidence for fiat creation. In other words, I'm telling you something this afternoon that Brent Dowrell, Medal of Science winner, actually admitted in print twice to 30,000 members of the AGU and most people don't know anything about it. You're privileged this afternoon, you do. <laughs> Thanks so much.